Hey guys, welcome back to Innovation. My name is Mitch, and today we're gonna be checking out the Summit Breeze rooftop tent from Crayfuel. First things first, let's go ahead and take all these straps off and get her open. All right, so we got it out of the crate that it ships in. Now it's time for us to open up the box and see what's inside. So first glance on this thing, it looks pretty sweet. We got the Crayfuel logo here at the top. Obviously there's lots of plastic for us to slice through, so let's go ahead and do that. So initial impressions here, this is a very high quality tent right here. It seems like everything is very well made, pretty refined as well, just from you know first glance looking around, no weird metals or anything. Looks very sleek. Got that all black vibe to it. Super stoked to put it on top of the uh, Subaru here and see what happens. So at first, I thought maybe I was missing a box or something, but all of the installation stuff is in here. So you go ahead and pull it up. Now it has a hydraulic system to it, so you really just gotta get it up to kind of about here and the whole thing opens by itself. Very sturdy, very quiet, and then all of the stuff that we're looking for is in here. Now these are shoe bags. So you wouldn't necessarily want to be tracking much stuff up into your tent. So there's a shoe bag on this side, shoe bag on that side. Ladder's going to hook right here when we get it up there. And that allows you to you know, put your dirty shoes in here. These things look like they attach pretty easily so you can probably wash this in between camping trips which is a nice little feature to be included here. And yeah, like I said, all of our attachment stuff and our user manual right here. So inside that bag with the user manual that we found here in the shoe bag we've got our bag of attachments right here put that over here for now and then these are going to be our giant clamps and we'll get into the install in just a minute gonna check it out a little bit maybe get uh, get familiar with it a little bit more and then we will attach it to the Subaru all right so I opened it up got the top part here and our top rack bars are installed in there so the cool thing about this particular rooftop tent is when it's in its folding out position, you can install these front racks so you can put something else up there. I'm not sure exactly what the weight rating is. We'll see if we can dig into that. It's like, could you put another rooftop basket on there? So I actually ended up taking a rooftop basket off my Subaru to install this. But if I could install that on top, carry some extra stuff, pop it down, put it in the car when, you know, when it's not in use or when I'm using a tent, that would be interesting. And then we've got these two guys. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, I'm not 100% sure what these are yet. So as we install and go through the manual, I'm sure we'll, we'll figure out what these go to. Now this rooftop tent and really most rooftop tents in general, especially that have the hard shell, are gonna be pretty heavy. Now I probably should get somebody to help me, but you know, this is a review, so I'm like, hey, if you don't have anybody, if you the only person that you know, could you do it? So what I think I'm gonna do to avoid scratching up the side here is I'm gonna put it on one end, so it's a little bit taller, so when I push it over here, I can kind of lift it up and get it on top of here, then I'll situate it once it's up there. So we'll try that. If I'm really struggling, I might just speed it up a little bit, but that is the plan. So let's get to it. So that wasn't too bad, actually. Uh, didn't scratch the car at all. All the scratches that are here were already there. So if you had to, Subaru, we got a 2020 Outback. That seemed to work pretty well. So I got it up there. I don't think it's fully centered, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it centered, and then we'll get to the install. All right, so now according to the manual, we got installation, we got it up here, we got it centered. So the next thing we're gonna do is slide the T-shaped bolts into the rail from two sides. Then we're going to slide the T-shaped bolts into the middle hole of the rail with the U-shaped stator, M8 arc washer, M8 flat washer, plastic nut, lightly screwed in advance. Okay, so remember that advance part. I feel like that's going to come in handy. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, so right here under the bottom, it's a little bit wider, so it allows us to get our T-post in there. And then even in the, I guess it doesn't even turn. So there's a little spot right here, so we're going to pop that up in here. 
boom. Slide this one up towards here. Now right in the middle, or on this side, there's also one. So like I said, I have prepped the other bolt. So two different washers on here, and we're gonna pop it up in there, slide it over, and then probably should unscrew that one because I'm gonna have to undo that in a minute. So let's, yeah, I'm gonna swap it. So, all right, so let's try that again. I'm gonna slide just the bolt in here. I've got the washers and stuff in this hand. I got the plastic net in this side. So I'm gonna come over here. Now with my particular rails, at these, you know, side things here, doesn't give me a whole lot of working room in there, which might get kind of tedious, but we'll see. Slid that T-post in, slid this in. I really don't have a terrible amount of room here, but you know what, we'll, we'll get it done. So we're gonna put the arc washer and the flat washer Seems to be working pretty good. Okay, well it's not fully tightened down, but it's pretty much there. Um, seems like it's got a really good grip on these bars. We took the tent to a more scenic location instead of my driveway. So first thing we're gonna do when we get out here is we're going to undo the latches here. I did the one in the back. Do this one up over here and the one in the front is already undone. Now something I'll mention real quick while we're here is when you go to install it, make sure that it clears the back. So if you have a back that comes up, um, mine is probably off by about, I don't know, half an inch or so. So I'm just having to stop it before it opens all the way up. Now all you have to do is move it forward, you know, reset it. Uh, what I'll probably do next time is move it a little bit too far forward, open the back, bring it back to where I've got, you know, I don't know, eighth of an inch or something like that. And then just something to pay attention to. But other than that, uh, traveled really well over here. And we're gonna go ahead and go through the setup process. So once you've done all the latches, we've got one, two, three, four. Uh, what's kind of nice is they hang down below so you can check it off from one spot. I can see one, two, three, four. And all we're gonna do is press open here. Hydraulic's gonna take over. There you go, a little bit further. Boom, it's gonna pop open. Now in order to get everything set up, we're gonna need our ladder. I need those planes to be quiet as well. So with the ladder, uh, it's got a nice little strap to it. Let's go ahead and undo that. Now these guys, all you're gonna do is hold these down. I guess you don't have to do that when you're opening it up. So go ahead and open it up. Now you don't need, on this particular vehicle, you don't need the full, yeah, right about there is good. So you don't need the full, the full ladder to get up here. Uh, you know, if it was a little bit taller, or for some reason I installed it on top of that roof basket, which wouldn't really make much sense. Um, we've got a couple more rungs here to get some more, some more distance out of it. But uh, pretty sturdy ladder, not, not super lightweight either. So which is good. I mean, if it was a ladder, I'd want it to be a little bit more robust. So used it a few times already. I've got no issues with it. Then let's go ahead and do the rest of the setup process. So pop up here. And from the top, go ahead and pull our shoe bags down. And we're gonna get our front bar and pull that to the front. And it's not really gonna lock into place because there is gonna be, there's a pull up here that I'll demonstrate here in a little bit where we're gonna tighten it up. But we're gonna pop in here so you can just kind of swap. Now all the videos I saw, people were just kind of getting inside like this. So I'll just get in like that. We're gonna take this, push this pin in right here. Pop it out till it locks into place. Pull on this side. Push it up till it locks into place. Now this was kind of half zipped when we initially got it. So I went ahead and just rolled this up. Makes it a lot easier to get in and out of it. So I would suggest doing that if I were you. I'm gonna actually pop down real quick, check the camera angle. All right, so readjusted the camera angle a little bit so you can see my beautiful face in the top of the tent, which might be more important to you. And we've got the sides locked in. Now, as I was saying before, because I might just cut the last part out, we've got the top here. Now, I rolled this thing up, which makes it a lot easier to get in and out of it. When we first got it, it was kind of zipped down to about here. You could wiggle your way in here, but having it up like this gives you a lot of space. So what I'll probably do is, before I pack it up again, 
make sure this is rolled up. That just makes getting in and out of it pretty easy. So the next thing we're gonna do is there's a zipper here on the top and all we're gonna do is extend these bars out, extend this bar out, this bar out, and boom. Now once those are locked into place, you're good to go. Go ahead and zip that top of the camper up and this thing is ready to roll. Lots of stuff to explore once we get in here. So I'll probably switch over to the GoPro and it's gonna make it a little bit easier to get in, in around here and showcase all this stuff. So doing it one-handed, easy peasy. Now, one thing that I was pretty surprised about, even though you know I had the package and it was pretty heavy, there is so much room in here. I mean, I'm five foot 10 and I can lay down fully in here, which is pretty impressive. So, like I said, there's a lot of stuff to go through while we're here. So we'll just start, uh, we'll start playing with things. So over here in the back, we've got a window, which, you know, is here, but we've got the, the back of it. So it lets in some ambient light, definitely would help with the airflow, I imagine. And this one looks like, we can just sort of tuck this back into itself. It's got some little pockets under the corners here, so we can tuck that in. And yeah, that's probably just gonna help us with, with airflow. Now one thing we do have is this cool LED light, which I guess you need a USB power bank for, which, you know, you could just store up there and you get this, yeah, nice little LED strip. That will be pretty handy. We do have a line up here, so, or a spot for a line. I don't think it came with a line, but that would be something cool to put a line up here. So you could hang something else. I don't know if you'd, I mean, you could hang something on here. Yeah, actually that feels pretty sturdy. You might just hang something on here if you had a lantern, something like that. Or if you wanted to put a tighter line back over there, that might be a cool thing to do as well. Tons of pockets, and we got this pocket up here, this pocket over here, that pocket down there. We got the pocket for our shoes, which I have not uh, utilized. Pocket over here. Let's go ahead and open some of these up. Now the zippers here are pretty sweet had any issues with them working. Oh, that is nice. Look at that view of the parking lot. So let me, let me see what we got as far as these. So it looks like they're kind of utilizing this pocket method on the sides. So all I gotta do is roll this up. You just kind of tuck down into there pretty pretty simple uh, which is nice you don't have to undo anything to get everything going it looks like it's gonna pretty much stay there if you have it done so let's go ahead and do the other side over here again super easy to zip and unzip go ahead and get this bad boy rolled up is that is pretty darn simple now there's a couple other points here we've got a little connection point here 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 so if you wanted to hang something small you could probably do that maybe there's another use case that I'm we got some more little hooks up here so definitely looks like there's some options and uh, realistically this would sleep my whole family so I've got a, a wife and a son and I feel like we would all fit in here really very comfortably so that is that is pretty cool. So looking forward to utilizing that. What else do you do when we're up here? So I guess another thing we'd showcase before we hop out is we've got the screens here, but you can also take those out. If you wanna get some some very good, oh, very good airflow. As soon as I actually zipped that down, this thing got a lot cooler. Now it's it's pretty hot in here. Or it's pretty hot in Texas, I should say. It's like 100 degrees outside. So doing that is, yeah, that makes quite a difference. All right, so let's go ahead and, I'm probably gonna zip the screens up though before we take it down just because usually on the sides, generally towards the front, once things are kind of getting smushed down, 
it tends to kind of fall out a little bit and I'll showcase that in just a second. All right, so the first step in the tear-on process is we're gonna open the roof and this is gonna show us these crossbars here. So all we're gonna do is let me get a good view for you. Class one, two, I'm doing this with, uh, with one hand. So. Let's see, so we got that done. Next thing we're gonna do, go over here, press this little guy. This side falls down. Do the same thing on the other side. Boom. So we'll push this back. Golden. Now the only thing that I might add is because we've got those those bad boys up there where we're supposed to mount our cross beams for the top, I might add a strap or something. I'll have to, I'll have to play around with that because the only thing is uh, you got to get back up on the ladder to uh, you know to fold it down. Not a huge deal, but it would be cool to once you drop this down, you could just pop down and keep on rolling. So we're gonna go ahead and fold it down. Now, so in the front, usually a lot of the air pushes this out, so you kind of gotta come and you know, make sure everything's in. Looks like on the side, oh, just a little bit there. But for the most part, I think it was maybe having those things open, there's just a little more airflow because it would kind of plume out and it's like catching some air. Go through and make sure this is stuffed in there. Okay, yeah, so this is what it was usually doing up over there. So you just want to come through, make sure you get everything shoved in there. And once you get everything in there like so. Oh, and our shoe bags. The shoe bags are nice, but I always leave them out. See, always, I've only opened and closed this thing like four times, but I have done it every time. Maybe I'll get, I'll get used to it. So then we're gonna bring it down and get our little latches ready here. Wow. Do the one on this side. And I'm doing this, you know, I'm doing this one-handed because I'm filming with the other one. So this is very easy to do when you actually have two hands. I got one more in the front. And there you go. It was in, it was up, good to go. So ladder-wise, I just pop this bad boy out and I got a, that's probably a, a two-hander. So it's a little bit scary, it's like a hand guillotine. There we go, look at that, did it with one, one hand, strap it up. So you do it with one hand, you can do it with two. Boom. And then for me, I'm usually just setting it right here against the tire, because it's a, you know, it's not pushing against the car or anything. Set it there until I, you know, put it where it needs to go. Do a quick little walk around, make sure everything is, it up looks good to me yeah like I said I'm not 100% sure about adding the strap to the top that'll probably complicate some things but I might do a little bit of thinking to figure out how we can how we can do that so we did the install we did a walkthrough showed you how to use it I'm gonna be taking this on a couple of trips here in the next uh, month or two so hopefully we'll get some good some good videos some good use case video it's our main camera up there hello Zip this back up. So yeah, all in all, just I mean, you just see when the crepe lights. We got this one turned off over here. This is still pretty bright. And like I said, this is plenty of room ugh, for me to sleep. I've got. If I put my head at the very edge, so my head's at the very edge. I've still got. I don't know, solid eight, nine inches at the end of foot room. So if you were doing solo camping, you know, you wanted to kind of shove some stuff into this side and scoot over. Let's say you had some, some extra gear or extra things, you throw that on that side. I'm sleeping over here, get all that space, get 
almost sleep like a starfish. Tons of extra room. So far, pretty impressed. I mean, the mattress itself is pretty comfortable. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't sure how that was going to be. I was like, ah, it can't be that comfortable. But it really, it really is. I mean, it's not a purple mattress, which is what I'm used to sleeping on at night. But if you're out camping, you're sleeping on the ground. This is 10 times better than that. And if I lay down, oh, plenty of headroom. So even when you're sitting up, sometimes with some of these smaller tents, you know, you get into the, the thing where you like, you try to sit up and there's not really any room. I can sit, you know, fully straight up. And there's still so much room on top of my head. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. It feels very roomy is what I'm, what I'm trying to say. How dramatic this lighting is. I'm about to tell a scary ghost story to you guys. Once upon a time, there was a rooftop tent. That's all you get for tonight. I already told my my nighttime stories to my son earlier. I'm all out of stories, guys. So, so far, really digging it. Looking forward to taking this thing on some actual camping trips. Uh, we have one scheduled end of October, so about a month from now. We got one scheduled. Might try to sneak one in a little bit sooner than that. So, I'm sure one ends up being the first camping trip we actually take this on as a family and you know do some stuff with it. I will. Take you guys along for the ride and we'll we'll see what happens all right guys well thank you so much for checking out the review if you guys want to know some more stuff about crave fuel i'll have a link to them down below they've got all the lights all the rooftop tents there's even a bigger rooftop tent called the giants i believe is what they what they call it and that one it's even bigger than this so yeah if you guys want to know I have a link down to them in the description if you guys have any questions for me let me know down in the comments love talking to you guys and we'll catch you on the next one